Good morning. My name is Poswat Dutirapum from Tamasa University, and I would like to extend my biggest gratitude to Tosum and my advisors from Tamasa, Ajahn Bancha, Ajahn Prakasit, and Ajahn Adinan, for giving me the opportunity to talk in this podium today. Being sports surgeons, we all encounter slab lesions, but until today, the diagnosis and treatment still remains controversial. Echo Heart performed among arthroscopic surgeons in 2008 support this controversy and show that there is less intra and intra observable agreement. The incidence of slab lesion remains uncertain, but it can length from 6% to as high as 26%. It was first described by Dr. Andrew in 1985. Just a quick review on anatomy. The superior labrum is more mobile than inferior labrum and acts like the anchor of bicep tendon. And some studies show that the longhead bicep tendon plays a role as a static stabilizer of phenohemolar joint. The blood supply is from the following arteries but the anterior superior portions of the labrum have less vascularity compared with other lesions, making it prone to injury and impair healing potential. It is important to know the following anatomic variation of the anterior superior labrum to avoid unnecessary surgery, which could lead to post-operative stiffness, particularly with external rotation and forward flexion. And there are two mechanisms of injury, acute traumatic with comprise of compression and traction injury and chronic repetitive overhead activities. In chronic cases, the stability of bicep anchor and pattern of injury are dependent on shoulder position during phase of overhead throwing, particularly during leg cocking phase. Chronic cases can be attributed to internal impingement, which occur in able position, which leads to posterior capsular contracture, and then leads to the posterior low superior labrum impinge on the GT, leading to slap tear over time. The sequelae of anti slap lesion may produce phenohemoral internal rotation deficit, which is defined as loss of more than 20 degrees of internal rotation compared to the contralateral shoulder. The patient usually present with the shoulder pain, instability, painful catching, popping. Isolated slap tear is not common. Associated shoulder injuries are more common, including later cup tears, shoulder instability, which may make the diagnosis more difficult. And due to the labrum tear, a cyst may form and cause suprascapular nerve compression, and patient will present with infraspinatal atrophy. And in the AC joint separation, there is a high prevalence of intraarticular pathology, especially slab tears. And there are so many tests for slab lesion, but no test is specific. We recommend to use a combination of these tests to improve the accuracy. MRTOGAM has improved sensitivity in diagnosing slab lesions. Diagnostic criteria include a lateral curve linear signal in the labrum, multiple or blanching lines, full thickness detachment with molecular wide separation or parallel cyst. The most popular classification for slab lesion was proposed by Snyder in 1990. This classification is designed to guide treatment based on the morphology of the tear. And this recommendation was lived from a study from I Scott 2021, and first line of treatment is always conservative, which includes less physical therapy and intraarticular injections. Example of the physical therapy is slipper stress, which targets the posterior capsule. Intraarticular corticosteroid injections can be successful up to 85%, particularly in middle-aged patients. PRP is really popular nowadays, but no evidence support is used. So what does the literature say about non-operative treatment? This case series 
of 371 patients treated non relatively show that function improved significantly and 71% of at least return to pre-participation levels. From this article, there are three predictive factors associated with failure of conservative treatment, include history of trauma, mechanical symptoms, and demand for overhead activities. The primary indication for surgery is the failure of conservative treatment. There are three main factors to consider. First is the age of the patient. Is the patient below 40 or above 60? Next is activity level. Is he an athlete or someone with a high demand job? Lastly, associated pathology. And these are the surgical options for slab lesions, debridement, slab repair, bicep tenodesis, bicep tenotomy. This is the treatment recommendation for slab lesion. And type 1 is conservative, type 3 is resection, and type 4 repair or tenodesis depending on the bicep tendon involvement. However, type 2 treatments remain controversial in terms of surgical options. In the past two decades, slab repair for type 2 lesions has increased by 400% as shown in this study. Despite this, there is no established protocol on how to do this. This systematic review shows that there is a big difference in the report variable, such as the number of anchor, type of anchor, placement, and suture configuration. Systematic reviews have shown mixed outcomes for type 2 repairs. This result lacks level 1 and 2 evidence for slab repair outcomes. And not all studies focus on overhead at least falsely evaluating success less. In overhead at least, like baseball pitcher, return to play length from 22 to 64%. Studies for overhead at least are not as promising compared to study on non athletes This study on this isolated type 2 slab tag show a worse prognosis in terms of repair failure and reoperation late. The least factors for revision surgery are aged more than 40 years, female obesity, smoking, and has long head bicep pathology. The most common complication is stiffness. And stiffness may come from the placement of an anterior anchor as shown in this diagram, which had the greatest effect on the external rotation. Another pearl in slab repair was provided by Dr. Shinagan in his paper. The main vascular supply of the proximal long head bicep tendon comes from the anterior dorsal direction. And putting sutures within the tree millimeters anterior to anterior border of bicep anchor can devascularize long head bicep tendon. This is one example of the complication after slab repair. Four years after the surgery, patients still have experienced pain and positive ovarian test. And because of the strangulation of the repair, intraop we found the bicep subluxation and subscapular list hair. And this is 28 years old male with present with the sudden light shoulder pain after hit volleyball like this and diagnosed with slap hair as shown in the MRI. And these are the tips for successful slap repair. Repair the labrum only, put the anchor on the edge of the glenoid, repair away from the biceps anchor, and maintain the original bicep anchor tension. And this is the post-operative clinical, good limb or motion, and he will feel happy. So moving on, the another surgical option is the biceps tenodesis, which recently has been popular this study on uh, 2020, show that there is a significantly reduced rate of slab repair performed in recent times. Pascal described an increased satisfaction and increased return to the previous level to of sports participation following bicep tenodesis compared to the 
slab repair. Although all the patients were perfectly chosen for bicep tenodesis. So patient selection is really important. In this study, we show that both bicep tenodesis and slab repair can provide good to excellent results if performed in appropriately selected patients with isolated type 2 slab lesion. This systematic review show better rate of return to spot for bicep tenodesis and the operation rate for bicep tenodesis was lower. However, systematic reviews can be limited by heterogeneity of the population, such as age, sport, athletic level. Despite bicep tenodesis become popular in the older patient, it remains unclear if this is an appropriate option in younger athletes. Like in the slab repair, when you focus on overhead athlete patients, there's still poor rate of return to prior level of play after bicep tenodesis. This is our technique for bicep tenodesis. The benefit of the technique are you can adjust tension in the tendon and this chain of the tendon damage by fixation device is reduced. After operation, the patient has a good range of motion, no pain, and good bicep strength. Lastly, we talk about the bicep tenotomy. For ages above 50 years old, study have shown no advantages of slab repair, but bicep tenotomy show improved functional score and limb of motion postoperatively. In conclusion, this is a simple algorithm to follow the slab lesion. We always start with a non-operative treatment, and if it fails, we do surgery. For the type of the surgery suitable for the patients, we look at the three factors, age, level activity, and associated injury. For age more than 60 years old and low demand, we recommend bicep tenotomy. For 40 to 60 years old non-overhead athletes, we recommend bicep tenodesis. And for the patient less than 40 or overhead athletes, the slab repair is recommended. Thank you.